Okay. So I think we had this amount established. Uh, first account. So A was the amount in the first account, B was the amount in the second account, C is the amount in the third account. I'm gonna be lazy and write dittos and put second. Third, ditto. <clears throat> Do we have ABCs? A sum of 20,000 is invested into all these three accounts. So who's first? Jerry? Jerry Brown? I'm not on mute. Okay. I didn't, Jerry, really, know how to, I didn't really know how to start this problem. <laughs> Okay, so if we know a sum of 20,000 is invested in the three, is there an equation you can give me that represents that? So we know A is the amount in the first account, B is the amount in the second, C is the amount of the third. Would it just be 20,000 equals ABC or A plus B plus C? Yeah, exactly. So I would probably start the other way around and do the A plus B plus C, right? If we sum these, right, we know that there's a sum of 20,000. Uh, in one year, the first fund grew by 5%, second by seven, and the third by 10. And we know that that earned 1650. So if the first account grew by 5%, how much money did that grow by total? How do I figure that out? Don't you multiply it by 0 0.05? Yeah, so I'm multiplying what by 0 0.05? A. A. So the amount that the first account grew was 5%, and the amount that was in there was A. So that's how much my first account grew, money-wise, total money-wise. 5% of A, of whatever the heck's in A. And if I want to combine that, I'm combining the amounts... When I combine amounts, that means I'm summing the amounts. So I'm combining how much each account grew individually. So that's how much A grew. How much did B grow by? 0 0.07. Yeah, so I'm doing 0 0.07. B. B. And I'm doing what, 10%? Point 0.10. Of C, and I'm running out of room. But when I sum these three things together, they should give me what? 20,000? Oh, wait. Yeah, that number. What did they give me? 1650 is what they said the earnings 1650, were? 1650, yeah. That's it. I'm running out of room here. Cram it up in here, 1650. Begging me for treats. Yeah. Okay. My dog tells me when to give her treats now. <laughs> spoiled, spoiled. Okay. You too. Uh, the amount invested in the third fund was four times the amount invested in the first fund. Woo. So what is the amount? The first thing I'm reading there is the amount 
in the third fund. What is that? Would it be um, point 10C? Right, because that's what we got confused with. I'm okay, so the amount invested, right? Is it going to be 1650 times four? So the amount invested in the third fund, that's one of our variables. Which variable is that? That's just C. Yeah. The amount invested in the third fund was, was, is, the R verbs represent what? Uh, C equals A times four. Yeah, so four times the amount in the first fund looks like what? Four A or A times four? This is like really close, almost close to being just like thrown in the matrix, I feel like almost. There's like a one A, there's a one B here, there's one C here. We have it on this second line. That's pretty much ready to get thrown into the matrix. Should there be A equals 4C? If C is one's a little one. bit weird, right? We got to do something with that. So what are we doing with that C equals 4A? Wait. Third fund was... Are you saying, no, C, C, are you asking if, if C equals 4A is correct? Yeah, if C is the third fund, shouldn't it be A equals 4C if the third fund is four times the amount in the first fund? So the third fund is four times the amount in the first fund. So if we have one in A, C should be four, right? Hey, Jake, so excuse me. I think I might be looking at it wrong. This, they said four times the first fund, like the first, uh, the first fund is A plus B plus Z equals to 20,000, which means the whole thing is time four, times four. The first fund is just the A. So A is the amount that we invested in the first fund, B is the amount that we invested in the second fund, C is the amount that we're investing in the third fund. When we you add them all... When we add them all up, we invested a total of 20,000 is what this first line tells me. Okay, in this case, I wanna just like, if it's the equation, we are going to write as A plus B plus C equals to 20,000. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's correct. Okay, okay and then how about the second? Is it 5A plus 7B plus 10Z equals to 1650? Uh, you have to convert those to decimal since they're percentages. So five should be 0.05. Okay. So it should be 0.05a plus 0.07b plus 0.10c equals 1650. The okay. last one we have is c equals 4a. And so we got to move things over a little bit to put this into the standard form. And so what do I want to move? Teacher, just one second. Can you go back? Why you said C equals to 4A? And for me, I think for the whole equation, we need to put it times four because we said, huh? So the amount invested in the third fund is the first thing I'm reading there. That's the variable C, right? Mm -hmm. And that was four times the amount invested in the first fund. So if I want to do four times the amount invested in the first fund, that looks like four times the amount invested in the first fund was the variable A, right? Yes. Okay. So that should give us C equals 4A or A times four. And we want to put this into matrix. These first two things look like they're ready to get put into a matrix. This last one, we got to move things around a little bit. You need to move C to the other side? Uh, you can move C to the other side. So if we did that, that would be what? 4A plus C, right? Plus C equals 4A. 
Uh, well, if we move it to the other side, we'd have to subtract it, right? It would have to be minus C. So for A minus C, whoa, what happened to my... Well, uh, I don't know why it keeps doing that. It did that while I go too. It just dropped it. Yes, it's going to be for A minus, for A minus C, no. Equals zero, right? I think is what because we had. Yes. For A minus C equals zero. We had A plus B plus C equals 20,000. Can y'all see it? Yeah, I don't see my display on here. I don't know why it's doing. Yeah, we just see a blank, a black screen. Well, <laughs> I don't know what's going on with my technology. Um, it's not working right. Uh, let me do it on here then. I think you may have been sharing the wrong screen with the wrong uh, Matthew Silver's account, I guess. No, no. I mean, I was sharing from my tablet. I was like complete separate login. I was hitting share on my tablet. It should be sharing my tablet. It should be sharing the second page now, right? Yeah, we can see it. All right. And if I do my annotations, they're a little bit different on here. I believe we have A plus B plus C. Okay. No, it's easy. Equals 20,000. We have 0.05A plus 0.07B plus 0.1C. And this is equal to that 1650 they give me. Pull this over a little bit so it's all in one line. And what else do I have? B for A minus C. Yes. What, at, what about my B? We didn't talk about B. Zero. Yeah, I want to make sure things line up. So if you have to, you can put zero B in here. And I would probably suggest it. Maybe put in my ones, my one C, my one A, my one B, my one C. And what is this equal to? That's important too. We did C minus C on one side. What does that give me on one side? Nothing? Yeah, there's nothing over there. You have to but put the zero. Like so many times people don't put the zero when they should. So now I'm writing over stuff. I could probably do it in like a darker color too, huh? Bolder. Does that make it? Let's get out of here. All right, so can we put this in a matrix is the next question. We're going yes. to set this equation with the matrix? Yeah, what does my matrix look like? It's like, like four, no, one, 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 2,000, 20,000, it's like that, 2,000. The first row. So I want to do one, one, one. Two thousand. And then I do it twenty thousand. Twenty thousand, yes, sorry. Okay, so I'm gonna do let me like share my other thing. That would be the smarter thing to do at this point. So I'm gonna put this into a calculator at this point, basically. I'm gonna put it into matrix. I feel like you should be able to put that to a matrix from that thing. So let me stop sharing this. Let me start sharing. Where's my smart view? There it is. So how do I do this on a calculator or on technology? TI-84. It has a thing that says matrix in it, right? So we look at the menu. If you go second and you hit this matrix, this brings up the names of your matrix. So if we want to recall the matrix, this is like where we come to recall the matrix. If we want to actually put in information into the matrix, that's under the edit. 
if we want to do some math operations on the matrix, there's our math operations for the matrix. But we want to edit it to put in the information. And I believe we're doing what? A three by four, I think is what the dimensions, rows by columns. A three by four. No, three by three. Uh, it should have three rows and you should have four columns if you count the column after the line. I'm tired. <laughs> we have an A, B, and a C, and then we have the solution, right? Yes. Yeah. And so the first one, I believe, is like one, 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 twenty thousand. The second one looked like, I got it right here behind you. No, I don't anymore. Uh, 0 0.05 was my A. My B was 0.07. I got to type it in right. My C was what, 0 0.10. And that gave me what, 1650? The last one was what, 4A minus C? So we have four in there. We have zero, zero Bs. And we have a minus one, zero. Minus one in the C. Whoa. Oh, that's right. So if you're in the TIs, one thing that's kind of silly, they do negatives different from the way they do minus signs. The minus <laughs> sign is different from the negative. Don't ask me why. I'm not really sure. It's not the way I would design my calculator, but it's there. <laughs> you can't put in the minus sign one. You have to put in like the negative sign one uh, and zero. And so I have my calculator, I have my matrix in my calculator. I don't want to edit this anymore. So guess what I'm going to do? How do I get out of this? Second, um, hit second on your calculator and hit quit. Yeah, it's it. Second quit. And then I want to go back. I want to do something with my matrix. So you might notice, like, that's my matrix now. If I want to recall it, make sure I typed in the right thing into my matrix. I can recall it with that. Uh, first one, that first menu. The names menu. If I want to do some math on that matrix, I got to scroll over here to the math. I got to scroll down. Hopefully, what some of these look familiar. We got a ref and we got an R ref. Which one do you want to do? Which one sounds better? The R ref. Yeah, that one is that one's the row reduced. It's the one that puts the zeros everywhere, right? Not just in the bottom. It puts them also on the top. Makes life a wee bit easier. So I want to do row reduced echelon form. I want to do that with the matrix. So I want to do that with the matrix called A. So I have to go back second matrix, go into A. And I want to do that with A. And so what does that tell me? That A equals um, 2,000, I mean, um, yeah, 2,500, B equals 7,500, and C equals 10,000. That's exactly what that matrix tells me. This tells me 1A is equal to 2,500. I have 1A, I have no Bs, I have no Cs. So that basically gives me the solution to A right there in the top. The next one gives me the solution to B, the next one gives me the solution to C. This is just going on back and writing out, can I do... Where's my little, my notation and stuff. I don't see my notation for the share screen. Excuse me, teacher, this myth, we, we, need, we can use it in the, when we, if we have a test or, we don't, we can't, right? You can because use it. You, because it's it, if you can actually the answer, just your right Z equals to 1000, uh, y, y equals to seven something, seven, you know, it's like, Mm -hmm. Yeah, it does all the work for you, pretty much. 
if you want to, if you have technology, if you have a calculator and you want to use it on the test for these problems, go right ahead. Like that's what I suggest doing, finding something that will work for this. Because me, I, I did it with my hand, just in the paper. Oh no, I'm not trying to do all that today. <clears throat> no, I know, I'm, but I'm just asking if it's, okay. And so you said A is 2,500, B is 7,500. That is absolutely right in math. Now I want that in English. So what does that tell me? Pretty much the same thing, right? Now you're just interpreting, looking back at what your variables were. So A was in the first account. We have in the first account, there was uh, 2,500 invested in the second account. There was 7,500 invested in the third account. There was 10,000 invested. That's absolutely correct. This is my A, this is my B, this is my C. This is the amount invested in A, the amount invested in B, amount invested in C. I do see my calculator, right? In the little smart view. Is that what's showing? Oh, there's my annotates. Yes. It's on the other. I'm sharing one screen and my annotations are on the other. That's why I was messing me up. This is my A, my B, my C, right? This is A, B, C, when I look at my columns. So I have one A, zero B, zero C. That basically tells me A is equal to 2,500. Questions about this one? So I expect to see, if you're going to use technology, I do expect to see this matrix, and I do expect to see this matrix that it gives you. I want you to write out at least two matrices, a whole, whole basically. So if we don't have the calculator, what program online would you recommend? Uh, for the homework, you can you Google like some RREF or something row reduced matrix. If I Google row reduced matrix, it's like the row reduction calculator, I think is what it, Google's transforming a matrix to a reduced row echelon form. It's like math.odoo.edu or something. Some university site. It'll give you detailed steps even. It will help um, with getting, oh, okay, I see it up there. It actually helps you with with the calculator because you were doing that. I, I'm I'm trying to uh, learn how to do the the matrix and it, and it wasn't working out for me. I got to A and that was it. There there is a built-in calculator on the test app, but I don't think it has matrices on there. But in the test, you don't have the uh, permission to use this one. No, so we, yeah, we can't use any other website. So you have to find some technology probably. Because I'm not familiar with the whole listing. Okay, any questions on this one? All right, so we have those other two. We're gonna jump and jump back. So we did a word problem in this section and then I wanna do stop share. Those other two, which ones were they? Let me look, bring it up now. How about 85 teacher? I think I find it like a lot of I gotta bring up that worksheet right quick. So I believe 2729, there it is. I have it right here. I'm gonna probably turn on, on and off my device, but 27 and 29, I want you to do take those, plug them into your calculator. I'm gonna give you a few minutes. Those are things that, I don't wanna give you too much information. 
not trying to go all the way back, but I used to calculate it to put it in the matrix, right? Mm-hmm. And at the beginning, you know, you was like, yeah, um, yeah, you know, we had got the same thing, like the same, the same matrix that you put in, you had got it coming out. I didn't get that. You got a different like, matrix. Yeah, I had I had a different matrix. So it might be it, simpler. <laughs> right. Okay, because I was okay. like, it, <laughs> yeah, it might simplify it actually. It might make it row reduced. Okay. If you put it row reduced, it might make those other entries zero. It might actually make it simpler to solve. Okay, I'm just trying to make sure, like, is, is that something that could happen or did I do it wrong? If you're getting the same solution, it sh- should still be. Like, you're just not going to have this step where you plug this thing into, up into the first uh, okay. equation. Oh. You'll get around doing that one step, I think. Questions about this one? Okay. So what do you, like, what was it, what is it? Let's go through this again, because this is going to be on the test. This is going to be something we got to get down. What's the, what's the strategy? What's the approach to this thing? I see my matrix. I right, could just share it. I want to share the right thing. Document. If I just share the document, what is my strategy to this thing when I look at it? I see this big, ugly thing. I see this matrix. First off, how do you know what the solution is? What's the thing that gives it away? The last row, right? We're looking at this last row. I'm looking here. I see zero equals zero. What what does that mean? We talked about it. That means there's infinitely many. If I see nothing but zeros. If I see nothing but zeros and then there's like a number over there. Solution. That's going to give me no solution. Like my zeros, my O's. Okay, if I see no solution, guess what? I can probably rejoice a little bit. I don't have to do all that back solving. I'm done with that guy, right? He's out of here. I see something with infinite solutions. What's my strategy then? I see this thing, I see the matrix. What do I do with that matrix? Someone, not not Ghania, someone else. I know you know. Okay. <laughs> what was the question? What do I do with this? Like, what's my strategy now? I know it's infinite solutions. What's the next step? Write equations out. Write the equations out. That's exactly the next step. So write out the equations it gives you. This is my X. This is my Y. This is my Z. This is my equals that number. What equations does that give me? That gives me, I don't have much room there. One X, what, plus two Y. I know I'm writing over stuff. Uh, minus Z equals five, right? This is giving me Y minus two Z equals one. And then what is my next strategy? I want to get things in what sort of thing? What does my solution look like? So our work from the bottom up, so solve for y. Yeah. It looks like my solutions when I'm talking about three different variables look like ordered triples. My z is my z. Now I'm solving going back up this way. My y is equal to what? Right, I'm just solving these things. One plus two z or two z plus one. I don't know what order it has it in. Probably do it with 2z plus 1 since it's a linear function. Either way, I wouldn't count off. You're getting the solution. I know that amount. I could go plug in 1 plus 2z into this y. 
And then I solve this thing for x. Questions about these two? Probably no questions about the no solutions. It's like, I ain't got to write nothing. It's the infinite solutions that are a little bit weird. Teacher, excuse me, if you use the, the words like if you no solution, it's an inconsistent system, and the other one, it's dependent system, right? Uh, yeah, so no solution, I believe, is inconsistent. Yeah, consistent. And when there's infinitely many solutions, I believe those are called dependent, right? Yes. They're not independent functions. They're, they're basically the same function, kind of over itself. Like we have just the, the, the two like consistent and dependent with three spaces. I, I think you cut out a little bit there in the audio. OK, sorry. <laughs> Are there questions about this one? Are we getting this down, the strategy? question but it's not like so much of how to do it because i understand that part i feel like what kind of get gets me uh confused is um the way that you worded it like for an example um uh, i'm trying to see it it's like solve the system by using backwards substitution and it's like it's like when i see that if i feel like oh i need to do something else compared to like Okay, just say like that problem said that and then go back to what the notes and so, then on the notes it said classify and determine the number of solution. And like both of them kind of you're doing the same thing, but you know. Yeah, is it the backward solution thing that's confusing you or what what's the word? Um yeah, like the backwards that's confusing me because I when I feel like oh I'm doing it right, then I go back and I'm like, oh, but this word might mean something else. And no, I'm like okay, so what they mean by backwards substitution is basically writing your equation from the numbers in the matrix. That's what they're considering backwards substitution, like sub substituting your variables back in. Okay, okay, okay. Yeah. Yeah, when I was looking at that, I was like. Cause that's why um, when, I, when we was in groups and I was doing it and I was like, oh, you know, I'm, I was doing something else because I'm like, but okay, that's it. Yeah, you're doing it. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> They're not asking for anything more. Okay, so we got a few more to work through. We got technology that we can use to work through it. Uh, so let's look and clear this off. Yeah. No, no more annotations. Uh, we got what, 47, 49, and then we got like two word problems, I believe, right? So I'm going to give you all a few minutes to work on which one, 47 and 49. Uh, you can use technology. I know it says use Gauss Jordan or something on there. I don't know. That was yesterday's work. Uh, so do the next two and then we will, I'll give you all about 10 minutes or so on those that where we're at. Yeah. And then we will finish off with those word problems. So do those two. If you still got time, work on those word problems a little bit. See if you can get the equations for the word problems. See if you can get the matrix. I think that one word problem is pretty much solved for you. It's got the matrix there. You just got to rearrange things. Uh, okay, so let's go to rooms. Yep. Start recording again. Uh, did anybody get the numbers for this thing when they th threw it into the calculator? Uh, negative 5.2 for x or negative 26 over 5. Yeah. And then negative 6 and then positive 4.2 or 21 over 5. And that's as far as I got. Yeah. I did it manually. I find like 26 over 5, minus 6, 21 over 5. Yep. And so those are the three numbers I'm getting. If I want to do the ordered pair, it's almost there already. Mm -hmm. I'm literally just reading those three numbers off, right? So minus 5.2, minus 6. I should put these 
as an order triple. I know I'm running out of room here, so I'm just pushing it in. But that's my solution right there, basically, right? It's sitting right there for you to pick it up. We need to write them as a fraction, right? Uh, these, it's a terminating decimal, so minus 5.2. If I do fractions, yeah, fi minus 5.2 is minus, what, 26 over 5? Yes. And if you have a TI calculator, if you just hit the math button, it's that first little option, math frac, it'll convert decimals to fractions. You can convert even your whole matrix to fractions. It'll just convert the whole matrix. One button, two button clicks. Three button clicks, maybe. Questions about this one? So I want to see the matrix that goes in. I want to see the matrix that comes out. Your solution should be in what? Order triples? OK. Now we yeah, have something. I, I able to, to use this, this calculator. You don't know. OK. So. Now we have some word problems. I feel like that one of them set up a little bit more. Which one? A 93 is set up a little bit more than 85. 85 is going to take a few minutes. 85 is the hardest one. Teacher. Yeah. I can't I try many times. I can't. Thank you. All right. So I feel like, where's my share button? Come on, share button. Let me share that document. It has a lot of words. Six point four P is the one I want to share. This is a little bit weird. Before I go to this problem, if I have mm -hmm. a pool that can empty, is it a pump that's emptying a pool? Is that what we're doing? It could yes. be emptying a pool, you could be building a house or something, whatever the heck you're doing, right? This this can be applied to a lot of sort of things that have a rate. This goes back to, I know you're probably gonna say if I do it, write it down, but the distance equals rate times time. If you remember the tables mm -hmm. that we made, right? Distance is rate times time. This kind of goes back and relates to that sort of concept. So if I have a pump that can pump out a pool every four hours, how much of that pool is it pumping out every one hour? If we do one pool. One over five? For every four hours. What's the rate that it's pumping that pool? One over four. It's one over four. You're getting one quarter of that pool pumped? Pool per hour or something, right? You're getting a quarter of that pool pumped every hour. That's why it takes four hours to pump the whole thing. Okay. This and setting things up like this <laughs> might help you in this next problem. I want to give you all like three minutes or something just to look at this, go over it. Maybe two minutes. Try to write out some equations from this thing before I do. I'm probably not going to go to groups. We don't have that much time. I just want to get through this. And yeah, it's probably going to be ugly, nasty numbers. This is a kind of more of a real world sort of problem. But we're going to use technology, so it shouldn't be too bad.
It looks like they defined your variables for you, right? They said let x represent the fraction of the pool. The first pump can empty in one hour. Y and Z represent the fraction for the second and third pumps. So three unknowns, I think I should get probably three equations out of this thing somehow. If I can get three equations and I can set them up in standard form, I can throw them into some technology, right? I can throw them into a matrix. That's my goal is to get the equations out of this thing. So if I'm reading this thing along, I read this sentence, the first pump is twice as fast as the second pump. What does that tell me? Which one's the first pump? X equals two Y. Okay. The first two pumps can empty the pool in eight hours. So how do I find the rate of the first two pumps? If they're working together, how does that affect the rate? X and Y are the first two pumps. X plus Y equals eight. Really close. X plus Y, <laughs> now we want the rate. Eight, so we're doing- It's not eight? Ah, uh, we're oh. doing- one pool in eight hours, what is the rate? How much of that pool have you emptied? Once. This is the thing I was like trying to set up earlier. So six, six? The rate that they're going if they're doing one pool in eight hours is what? If we do one pull in four hours, it's one fourth. If we do it in eight hours, it's how much? It's the same thing. It's the same, right? We're doing what? Yeah. What it's one, it's eight over four and it's going to one over two. It's one over what? Eight. One over eight, right? This is my rate. All three pumps, We'll empty it in six hours. What does that look like? Hmm. X, plus X plus Y, y plus Z equals six. one over six. Oh, that's that's exactly it. So now we did, we did two pumps, do it in eight hours. Looks like X plus Y equals one eighth. Now we do all three in six hours, right? And so if we want all three, all three pumps is X plus Y plus Z. And this is equal to, you said it already, right? One six. Teacher, can you please, can you do, uh, do us the favor to, to do it again and to explain it more slow down, please? Okay, so this first one says the first pump is twice as fast as the second one. I think you probably got that one, right? Yeah. All right, so x equals 2y. The next one says when we do the first pump and the second pump together, it's going to clear out in eight hours. Okay. And so we want to know the rate. We're not doing the time. We're not doing the distance or the amount of pulls clean or emptied, right? Okay. We want the rate. So we were doing the rate in pools per hour. And so when they work together, we're combining their rates with addition. So on the left, we have something that looks like X plus Y for the first pump plus the second pump. And it tells me their rate is that they can do a pool in eight hours. Mm -hmm. So the rate for that would be Not the eight, but the one over eight for the one pool every eight hours. Or 
or they're emptying one eighth of a pool every hour when we put them together. That's what this is telling me. When we add all three of the rates together, they can get it done in six hours. So we add all three of the rates, they're cleaning out what, one sixth of the pool? Every one hour? I think we're pretty much there to put this thing into a matrix. The second and third equation are definitely like set up. We might have to do what, plus zero Z here? Tell me there's no Zs maybe there. Fill in your zero variables. This tells me one, 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 right? One, six. I believe this one gives me one, one, zero, one, eight when I'm gonna plug it into matrix. But this top equation, we might have to do something too. How do we rearrange this top equation? Uh, would you subtract two y from both sides? Yeah. So if I do x minus two y, ah, two y, and that's equal to what? Zero. All right. Making sure y'all fill in those zeros is what I'm trying to do here. If you have an equal zero, there's an equal zero there. Don't forget to put equal zero. All right. So it is set up to go through into a matrix and use some technology on. I think I'm going to leave the rest of that for y'all to do. It's one minus Have the three two. equations, we can throw it into a matrix. All right, so it is definitely time, past time now. If y'all got to jet out, bounce to somewhere. Understandable. Have a good day, everyone. All right, so if you want, I can go through um, 93. This is pretty much set up for the matrix. 93, what am I doing on 93? It's not quite ready to get thrown into a matrix. I wanted, it's got three different variables, got three different equations here, right? What am I doing to that equation? How do I get that set up to go through it into a matrix? Um, you need to get the Y on the other side, right? Yeah, we get our variables to one side, get our constants to the other is basically what we're doing. So we're gonna subtract that Y, X minus Y, what, plus five equals seven. And then right, because we want things to be X, Y, Z, right? X, Y, Z constants. So that we can go plug it into our matrix. Our first column is going to be X's, our second column will be Y's, third column will be Z's, the last column will be the constants. So we got our X, we got our Y's. We don't have any Z's here. And what should that constant be? Zero hmm. will be the Y, I mean the Z. Yeah. Well, what's the constant on the other side? Three. Seven eight, minus eight. How doing? Should be subtracting five, right, to get it over. Oh. Two. Two. Yeah, it should be two. So 
So we get our variables to one side is basically the strategy, right? We get our constants to the other. If we don't see the variable there, it's the zero variable. <laughs> So this is the first line, one, negative one, zero, two, I believe is the numbers I'm picking off of there. Should be the first line of my matrix. The next line of my matrix is, is minus coming one. from that minus guy. One, zero, one, minus three. Uh, so for this one, I have what, Z plus six, equals x plus three, what am I moving? The constant, no, the x. Uh -huh. So we subtract the x, so if we subtract the x over, yeah, subtract x, we still have a positive z and a positive six, we subtracted the x, I think I just have three over there, and I still need to move what? Three to other, the six to the other side. At six, it's a constant with my variables. I got to move it to the other side. So I believe I have a minus x. Plus z equals minus three. Plus z equals minus three. What about my y's? Zero. Yeah, there's zero y's in here. So I always want to keep it x, y, z on that side. Z equals mm -hmm. some sort of constant. If I don't see the variable there, I should fill it in with zero. So the second line on my matrix should look like what? Minus one, zero, one, minus three? Yes. All right. And the last line on my matrix that I'm plugging in, I have y plus z, uh, y plus three equals z plus four. Mm -hmm. What it's am I moving? We move the z and we move the three to the other sides. So. We move the z over so it becomes a minus z. I have a y plus three still. I think I'm going to write the y first. Okay. This is equal to what, four? No, one. It's going to be y minus z equals to one. And we still have a plus three on that side. Right, you got to move yeah, it. Yeah, you have plus three. You move it to the other side. It's going yeah. to be four minus right. three. Move it to the other side. So y minus z is equal to what, one? Y minus, yes. OK. So what are you saying? Yes, yeah. And what about my, what am I missing that I probably need to fill in? You're missing your, your X. You're missing my X? No, I'm not. Okay, yeah. It's not yours, yeah. All right. <laughs> Math humor there. Okay. Yeah. Write a song about it, probably. It's going to be zero. Zero, one, one minus one. one. Yeah, one. one. That's it. That's it. So it looks like we got everything to put into our matrix. So it's good. Okay, I'm gonna hit stop on the recording, I think.